Hi class, this is Bill Berry and this is an early video to get you started with some of the tools that we'll need to use during the class in CSC 142. First thing that we need to do is if you're working at home you'll need to be able to install the BlueJ Java tools, uh, the integrated development environment that we're going to use, and so we're going to do a quick look at how to make our first program using BlueJ. Uh, first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have the tools installed, so you'll want to go to www.bluej.org and then in here you're going to find some tools for uh, that you'll want to download and use. So the first thing we'll want to do is use the download and install. You're going to want to do the, take this first option which is a Blue Day GA installer with Java 8 JDK, Java Development Kit. So you'll need to choose that. If you try to choose some smaller piece then that's going to be a problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a download but you'll need to install that if you're going to work at home. Once you install that you're going to see that uh, you'll have it available and on my desk Desktop, you'll see uh, I've made a link to that to make it easy. So install that, run BlueJ, that's our first step. Next to it you'll notice that I have the link to the API documentation for Java platform. You'll want to look at the materials and have that link. It's very useful to have that sitting next to you. So uh, I have those two things together and I'm going to go ahead and start BlueJ to show how we're going to make our first project. Okay, so we've started that, and BlueJ has nothing going at the moment, of course. We want to start a new project. So we're going to do Project, New Project. Now one thing that we need to know is that BlueJ, as with many of the IDEs that you're going to use, the, the fancier integrated development environments, it's going to want a project folder, not just a file. So be aware of that. Anytime uh, we're, we're trying to point it to things, we want to just simply point it to a folder, not to a particular file in a folder. So I'm I'm already on my desktop and the folder name I'm going to give it is first program. So the name of my folder and project is going to be first program. I'm going to say create. Now uh, it automatically does uh, creates this project and in fact we're going to look here and we'll see that there's going to be a folder called first program. It doesn't have much in it yet and we'll look at the file folder a little more specifically in a minute uh, but let's go ahead and see what BlueJ does and how to start a new project. Alright, so first thing we need to do is it's got this readme file, that's not really enough. We want to have a program file that we can start typing into so we're going to choose new class. The class that we're going to give it, we give it a name, uh, we can call it whatever we want. Again I'm just going to say first program. You want to give it some descriptive name and it's going to uh, create that once we say OK. What you see here is a list of classes and the relationships between the classes. That's not going to mean much for a while until we get into object-oriented programming, but for now just realize the thing that we're going to write is going to be sitting here and it's going to have these diagonal slash marks. That means that that has not been compiled. It's not ready to run yet. So we're going to double click it and then we're going to start writing our program. Now the first thing you can do is change out the sample text and give it a you know, better name. So I'm going to say this is my first Java program uh, saying hello to the world. I'm going to delete the rest of these. Notice that in Java a block comment starts with these two characters slash asterisk and ends with the opposite asterisk slash. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of the comments in between and just leave that for now. Notice that it starts uh, with a line that says public class first program. Again don't worry about that. Pretend at this moment that's just the way it is. You just have to do that. I'm going to delete everything down here through all the rest of the yellow stuff. Notice that it color codes these things so I can tell what block I'm in, what class, what method, what function, etc. I'm just going to delete all of that stuff. The other thing to note right away is that unlike uh, Python and some other programming languages, the way that Java makes things start and end is with curly, brace, curly brackets, right? So in this case, instead of marking a block with indentation like Python does, we mark it here with open curly brace and close curly brace. So, um, and indentation doesn't mean anything to Java. We're going to learn that too. So for now, uh, again, to make things get started, what you need to do is you need to create the following. So type in your editor. I tabbed in just to make it a little bit easier to see. Public, static, void. And then I'm going to just say I'm going to write myself a main program. Then uh, the arguments to main are going to be as follows. String, open, close, square brackets, and then we're going to call this parameter arguments. I'm going to close my uh, parentheses and I'm going to put an open uh, curly brace 
and then I'm going to enter and just out of habit I always put a close curly brace next and then I go back and put some space. You know you're going to need that close one so you might as well start. So again we're going to learn later what all of these things mean but for the moment just pretend this is the way it has to be. Copy this code exactly as you see it here and we'll learn all the pieces later. Now to do something that actually will show some output let's just do something very simple. We're going to use the system library. We're going to call the uh, within that we're going to want an output method so we type a dot out. Within that we're going to use a print the method called printline printlin and then it has a, as a fun it's a function so it has arguments of course notice quotes not apostrophes here don't don't confuse apostrophes and uh, quotation marks they mean slightly different things here not like python and then we're going to say hello world and we're going to then close our our uh, quotation marks close our parentheses and then as with all good statements in java as well as c we close with a semicolon to say i am done with this statement You'll learn later that you can break things up over multiple lines. For instance, that is completely valid. As long as you're careful with where you break it, it doesn't matter. And the semicolon says, hey, regardless of where I was on the line, I'm done with this statement. So now I have, I have created my first program. Hopefully it's a working program. Notice if I make a mistake, uh, we'll, we'll see that in a minute. But let me just compile this, and you'll see that at the bottom it says class compiled, no syntax errors. If you get a syntax error, like you leave out the semicolon, it says, hey, I expected something else here. I expected a semicolon. And then I'm going to say compile. Now if I minimize this or close that, you'll see that first program is listed here, but now it doesn't have all of those uh, hash marks across it. It says, hey, I'm compiled and I'm ready to run. To run this thing, you just need to right click and then you tell it which of the methods you want to run. In this case, we're going to run main. Again, you could compile from here. There's lots of other things you can do, but let's just, you know, for the moment, just say you're going to run main. Once you sit, hit uh, click it or you hit enter, it's going to say uh, supply those arguments to me. We don't care. We don't understand what they mean at the moment. That's okay. Just hit okay. And you'll see that the terminal window opens and indeed it says hello world. Yay. So that's how to run the, write the first program and run it. Now, just for fun, let's say we close this project and we come back another day. How do we open it? Well, you can't just double click the folder, right? In fact, let's look at the folder real quickly and see what's in it. The important things for you to know right now are two files. First, this package is the actual BlueJ project. So that's the thing that it, it knows uh, sort of, you know, what, what's going on with the project. That file is the key to BlueJ to know how to put everything together. The Java file is going to be your file that's going to contain your code. So if I start Notepad and I just drag that in, you'll see indeed that's your program. And if I try to look at this package file, you won't understand everything that's in there, but you'll notice that that's its, you know, sort of stuff that BlueJ needs to get things going. These other files, don't worry about them. We'll learn more about what they all mean at a later date, so no worries there. Uh, now, what if we want to open this project again? Well, we have a couple of options. One is we can start BlueJ, and then from BlueJ, you can say Project Open Recent, and you can go click that folder, right? Choose that folder. Or you could say open project, and remember, once you get to do that, you're going to click, and notice it knows these folders are BlueJ. I'm going to click that guy. You don't have to dive into it, so don't double click. Just click the folder, say open, and it will bring it up, and notice it's compiled and ready to go. And you can just run it. Uh, another way that I've found that's convenient to do it is if you have a BlueJ link on your desktop in Windows, I don't know if this is always true or it's just the way that I have it set up, but if I drag and drop this package file onto the BlueJ icon on my desktop, that will also satisfy and it will open that project. So that's a quick little lesson in how to get BlueJ going, how to create a new project, and how to open a project if you've closed it and it's not and it's not present. Notice one nice thing about BlueJ is if you just double click it, it will open the last project that you had open. So if you're working on one project over and over, that makes it very convenient. So quick introduction to BlueJ and writing our first program in BlueJ. Uh, have fun. Thanks for watching the video and we'll talk to you soon online or see you in class.